What's up everybody? My name is Cole Walliser and I'm here to teach you how to make a perfect espresso on a shitty slash cheap machine. Well not shitty, but just not top of the line. So any machine you have at home, uh, it's gonna really help. It took me about a year to figure out how to do these little tips to pull a perfect espresso shot and so I want to share them with you. So the first thing that makes the biggest difference is grind size, but we're actually not gonna talk about that. There's plenty of videos out there on grind size. I'm actually gonna show you some tools that you can use on your own machine at home to get better espresso. Because for me, I wanted to buy a better machine, which is thousands and thousands of dollars, but I sort of decided against it. So the number one tool that you need is a scale. A good scale that measures to 0.1 grams. I got this one on Amazon. This one's kind of expensive, I think it's like 60 bucks, but I also bought one for like $10, which does the job. It's the tool that you need to use to perfect your brew ratio. And so, I'm not gonna go through a whole big thing with brew ratio, but for espresso, what you want is a two to one ratio uh, coming in and going out. So when you measure your grinds, you want, for example, say 18 grams in, and you want 36 grams out. That's a two to one brew ratio, and, and there's a lot more info about this, but that's basically, if you strive for that, you're getting good espresso. All right, so after the scale, the number one tool is a distribution tool. This was the key component for me to pull in better shots at home. So what was happening, before, uh, in the portafilter I'd have a mound of grounds and I would just smash it down with a tamper and that does not work at all. But it's super important to have a level grinds on your portafilter when you tamp. After that, you need a good tamper. So this machine comes with this little plastic thing. It's garbage, don't even, don't even bother using it. Get yourself a good tamper that fits the portafilter properly and this one is actually spring-loaded. You can see, so that'll help you determine how much pressure to put, because that was always a big question too. You can like mash it down, or you can just sort of like kind of tamp it a little bit, um, but having it be spring-loaded helps you control the pressure that you put on, which is also really important. Thirdly, is a naked portafilter. A normal portafilter has these spout things, and so when you're brewing your espresso, it comes out, but you can't see what's going on, and if it's squirting all over the place, or if there's channeling going on, you're not gonna be able to tell what's happening because you can't see in it. But with this guy, if there's a nice smooth espresso being pulled out and coming through in like one stream that looks delicious and perfect, that's when you know you're doing it right. Uh, most companies don't sell naked portafilters, but they do sell extras. So what I did was I ordered one of these guys and I sent it to my buddy, Lucas, who's good with tools, and he just ground out the bottom and gave it to me. First things first, you gotta make sure the machine is on and warm, so you want to warm this up. You got to make sure everything is warm. So what I do is I take my portafilter, I actually run it under warm water. You also can just run an empty shot. This will warm up the portafilter. Portafilter is wet. It'll create channeling with the grinds, so you want to make sure this is nice and dry, but warm. So we're weighing this, and this comes in at 19.9 grams. So all you want to do, and all what I do, is I just sort of like even this out and I spread it around. Because we had 19 grams, we only want 18 and a half, for my machine in particular. So now that's evenly distributed but not tamped there. We weigh this, so that's 18.6. So the way the tool works, you pop the tool on, and you just get a little spin, and that will evenly distribute your brines. So now, 18.5, we take our tamper, level this out, and just give it a little tamp till the spring compresses and a twist. I like to be fancy and get this little twirl. Get rid of all the extra grinds. This goes in the locking thing. So uh, if you're really trying to find your brew ratio, you want to measure it as it pulls. You can do this after, but I have a timer built in on the scale. So I just do it all at once. We start that. Just waiting, patiently waiting. Here we go. So in 34 seconds, oh, that's interesting. 34 seconds, it was 34 grams. Uh, which is pretty close to being on target. 18.5 grams in, so that's 37 grams out. We ended up with 34.1. It's pretty close to two. That's good enough for me. Some people like their espresso, their brew ratios in between two to one to three to one, but this is your espresso and probably delicious. Cheers. I never drink just plain espresso, but this is good. So the main point of having all these tools is to pull a consistent shot. Even if it's wrong, 
If it's consistently wrong, you can adjust it. My big problem for a year of trying to figure out how to get a good shot is that it was very inconsistent. I would pull a shot and do the exact same thing and it would be way different. I'd have way more or way less and go for way longer. The brew ratio was way off. It was very inconsistent and it was because of what I was doing and how I was handling the grinds, not so much what the grind was or what the machine was doing. So now that you have my tips on how to make a perfect espresso, I would love to see the coffees that you're making. So I have a little tag that I use, uh, Cafe Colion, because my nickname's Colion, and all the coffees I make out of here, I tag Cafe Colion. So if you're using the Cafe Colion tips, tag yourself on like Instagram or wherever. I'd love to see the coffees you guys make using the tips that I just gave you right here. So enjoy your coffees, and I will see you next time when I give you more random tips about random things I'm obsessed with, like filmmaking and my truck. <laughs> all right, peace.